Let's look at a calorimetry problem now. So a calorimeter is a device that uh, it maintains the heat inside of it so no heat is lost in the environment. And for example, if we have a, an insulated cup that has some water in it and we drop a heated piece of metal into there, all of the energy or all the heat lost by the metal will be absorbed by the water and then will be lost to the system. And what we're saying then is that the, the Q or the heat lost by the metal is equal but opposite directions to the Q that is, uh, is gained by the water. And so the Q, remember the, the Q or equals the mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. So if we don't know one of those pieces of the puzzle, then we can uh, figure out what that missing piece is based on the fact that all the energy lost by the hot metal is gained by the, the cooler water. So we have several things in the calorimeter that we know. We would have to know how much mass we put in there of water. We would know the water specific heat would take its temperature before we added anything to it. That would be its initial temperature. Then we would drop the piece of metal in and wait for the system to come to equilibrium. We'd measure the temperature again, and that would be the final temperature of the water. So to start with, we could have the mass of the metal, and it could be unknown what that metal is made out of, so we don't know its specific heat. But we know its temperature before we put it into the water. And again, once we drop it in the water and the system comes to equilibrium, the final temperature of the metal will equal the final temperature of the water. They'll be at the same temperature. So the energy lost from the metal as it cools down is absorbed by the water as it heats up. And the amount of temperature change of the metal and the water will be relative to their specific heat. So if we have a typical calorimeter problem like the one shown here, if we take 399 grams of this unknown metal. It's initially at 412 degrees Celsius. So its mass is 399 grams. Its initial temperature is 412 degrees Celsius. And it's mixed with 555 milliliters of water. And remember the density of water is one gram per milliliter. So that's the same as saying we have 555 grams of water. It's initially at 25 degrees Celsius. And when equilibrium is reached, the system has a temperature of 82 degrees Celsius. So the final temperature of both the water is 82 degrees Celsius, and also the final temperature of the metal is 82 degrees Celsius. And it says the specific heat of water is 4.2 joules per gram degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of the metal? So I like to, when I do these kind of problems, is try to figure out what I have for each thing. So I keep the mass and the temperature of the water and the specific heat in one place and the metal in another place. So I'm not getting confused saying, well, this 40, 12, 412 is relative to 25. So we wanna look at what things are paired up and it's easier for me if I keep them separate like this. So how I would approach this problem is is solving for the Q of the water because I have everything that goes in the Q of the water because Q equals, again, mass times the specific heat times the change in temperature. And I have all of those things for the water. So I could say the Q of the water is our 550 grams times our 4.2 joules per gram degree Celsius times our change in temperature. So our final temperature is 82 degrees Celsius minus our uh, initial temperature of the water of 25 degrees Celsius. And I would plug that into my calculator and come up with the one, three, two, eight, six, seven. That's not much of a seven, seven joules. All right, so our temperature change is positive here, so our Q, our uh, energy change is positive as well. 
meaning again that we have an endothermic process with the water. The water is, is absorbing energy. So what I would do then is say, well, the Q of the metal is equal to the Q of the water, but opposite in sign. So I know that the metal has an energy or change or heat change of minus one, three, two, eight, six, seven joules. So the metal gave up this much heat, the water absorbed that much heat. So now for my metal, I know my Q, I know my mass, I know my change in temperature. What I don't know is my specific heat. So I would rearrange this equation and say that the specific heat of that metal is then equal to its uh, Q, right? So our uh, Cp then equals our Q over our mass times our change in temperature. So it equals our Q, which is negative one, three, two, eight, six, seven joules. And the mass of the metal was 399 grams. And the temperature change of the metal, our final temperature was 82 degrees Celsius. And our initial temperature was 412 degrees Celsius. So you can see our temperature change is gonna be negative, which is good because our, uh, our heat change is negative. Those two negatives will cancel and it'll leave us with a positive specific heat. So if I plug this into my calculator, I get negative one, three, two, eight, six, seven joules divided by a negative one, three, one, six, seven, zero gram degree Celsius. And this is gonna equal about 1.0 joules over gram degree Celsius. So my units work out and everything seems to, to have taken care of itself. So we have a negative over a negative, which makes positive, which is good because our specific heat cannot be negative.